After another England defeat at the ODI World Cup, it's time for Ask George. <laughs> oh, and we're starting a bit earlier today um, because of the mm. event. Of England. The- yeah, England were very, very sensitive and thoughtful in that regard, making yeah, sure they've got an early night. Yeah, they've done that the past couple of games, knew I wanted to finish early. So they went, we'll, we'll keep it down. Um, first question today, George, from Patrick, Patrick Brennan, who asks, on a scale of losing two quick wickets after a solid opening partnership to 2013-14 Ashes Armageddon, how bad has this World Cup campaign been? Oh. 13, 14 Armageddon, I think. I, don't, I mean, you know, it's cricket and there's more important things in the world, but England did come as world champions and they have gone from champs to chumps quite quickly, haven't they? Because these have been thrashings. Was it 25 overs remaining today? Yeah. And um, I guess there was so much more expectation in the past. Not a huge amount had been expected. Look, up. It's not quite answering the question, but actually it's quite sad because it's been a brilliant side. It's been, you know, we've we've seen rubbish English sides. And this has been a brilliant side that's played some of the most joyous, entertaining cricket imaginable by anyone, let alone England. Um, and you know, they won two World Cups, 50 of uh, 20 over, the only men's side to do that at the same time. And uh, they've played with a sort of um aggression and verve that's been a joy. Uh, and for it to end this way, it, it, you know, to end so brutally and in such an ugly way, I don't know. I hope it doesn't tarnish the memories of those good days, but it is an ending. I mean, it's, it's clearly an ending and it's a bit sad. And eras in English cricket tend to be uh, shorter than eras uh, in, say, Australian cricket. Yes. Uh, and this one has been sadly quite short and it is time to start again. Yeah, it does kind of feel, I mean, you know, a decent chunk of those players you would still put in sort of an England greatest white ball team, but at the moment something's just not mm. happening. And it, it does feel quite sad to see a sort of fade, really, of, of the team that captured England, you know, four years ago. Um, yeah. Yeah, I don't know. Well, not many not many people go out on top. There's a reason that, that things end, isn't there? Exactly. You know, if things ended well, they wouldn't tend to end. Well, on the theme of ending, uh, Simon Clark has asked, should Mott be resigning after this World Cup? I don't think that's the key issue. Mm. Look, you can't pretend he's had a great time and there will be scrutiny. Personally, that doesn't particularly motivate me. I don't think that's the key issue. But he hasn't shown any signs that he is, one, able to lift them or two, able to grapple with the issues which have brought them here. Mm-hmm. Um, but he might feel that they're mid-competition and now's not the time to do it. And I think that would probably be a reasonable thing for him to say. But there need to be some honest, hard conversations afterwards. Um, and he'll have to prove that he he's able to do that. Uh, you, you, English cricket has got a little bit hubristic, I think, in the, in the last little while because of the way they're playing. And, um, you know, let's just remember that they, they are going to be, you know, very close to rock bottom of the ODI in the ODI World Cup, and they haven't won a test series this year. So uh, a little bit of a wake-up call for English cricket. And uh, is he part of the solution? I, I, I'm not sure how much part of the problem he's been. Honestly, I think that's a, a wee bit of a knee-jerk reaction. Mm. Um, Tom Rigby has asked, rather than wait for, <laughs> rather than wait for another prolonged inquiry, do we just call time on some careers as we look to build towards the next World Cup? Yes, mm. Ab- absolutely. Mm. There's not a lot of point having anyone in the side going forward who's not going to be there in four years' time, particularly if it's going to be a 50-over or 40-over World Cup, whatever it's going to be. Uh, there's a Champions Trophy in about 18 months or something. That could be a staging post to it. Now is the time to start playing other players yeah so those who you don't think are going to be there yeah move on now yeah it's it does kind of I mean I was thinking is it a case of oh, like are they shielding Harry Brook was that you know they were just expecting to do that is that the case I mean presumably Harry Not... Brook will be a part of the next cycle right yeah so... I don't look I, I could I could see I, I could see why he wasn't picked I'm not saying it was right 
But I could understand that at least there was some consistency going back to the start of the tournament, if not from the last game, in that yeah. he was originally picked as a backup to Stokes. Yeah. Stokes has come back into the side, so it sort of made sense with balance issues that he dropped out. Uh, whether you should be dropping your most promising young batter is another very reasonable question. Don't know. Um, but I could see why they felt they wanted this balance to the side. Mm-hmm. Especially with Stokes not bowling, you know that was mentioned a lot. That that's a huge problem, yeah. Yeah. Um, Paul Taylor has asked, in light mm-hmm. of the Rashid run out and the Bairstow's Ashes stumping, do the MCC oh, yeah. need to clarify the dead ball laws? No, no, <laughs> they don't really. I'm sorry, they don't. I mean, if, if, no, the 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 laws are pretty clear. Whenever players say. The, the laws are a bit unclear, such as um, saliva on the ball and that sort of stuff in the past. Anyway, they're not. They just haven't read them. Yeah. So, um, Adil, bless him. I, I, he was dozy. He was dozy. And Mendis saw it and took a shy and it's out. It's just out. Yeah. I didn't realise there was any controversy over it. Look, there's, there wasn't any doubt, actually, about whether Johnny Bester was out. Mm. You know, sorry to be pragmatic about it. I am, I'm afraid. He was definitely out. The question was whether Australia wanted to withdraw the appeal. And that's that's reasonable. They could have done. But he was out. Mm-hmm. Uh, if the umpire had said over, it wouldn't have been out. But he didn't. So it was out. Mm-hmm. So, no, they don't need to clarify the laws. But maybe England, they, England need, to need to keep their bats. Yeah. <laughs> well, they just need to keep the bats in the crease. It is one of the things. Yeah. But these, these are the basics that they're not doing. Yeah. Well, we could say that about a lot of things, really. We could. Uh, Sam Hurst has asked, who would you interest with the massive rebuild and overhaul of the white ball team post this debacle? Doesn't seem like Mott is up to the job and Butler being captain seems to have frazzled his brain with bat in hand. Can we tempt Owen Morgan out of the commentary box to coach? Yeah, I'm seeing the Owen Morgan name a lot. I don't don't think it's the right name. Owen Morgan obviously did brilliant things for English cricket Mm -hmm. as captain. He was the right man for the right job at the right time. Is he the right person for... A rebuild in this regard? No, I don't think he is. I think he'll accelerate the push towards franchises and players dipping in and out of international duty. And I don't think that's the way to go. So who could do it? I don't know. Loads of people could do it. But it, it, I think one of Mott's issues is maybe that he hasn't got an absolutely thorough understanding of English cricket. Now, I know he's worked at Glamorgan, for example. But I don't think he knows necessarily all the young players who are coming through, and I think that would help. Um, I think they've got to look at how much 50-over cricket they're playing domestically and internationally, you know, as Joe Root said, you know, as they're beginning to say, as as Mott has said as well. So uh, just on the Josh Butler thing, I thought he was brilliant in Australia last year. He, he was such a good leader. Yep. He, 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 he didn't have a side which allowed him to just do it formulaically. When Andrew Strauss was England captain, yeah, you could predict everything that was going to happen. And it was because he had a terribly good side. That's not a criticism. It's mm-hmm. just, you know, you knew that Anderson and Swan largely were going to take the, the were bowl after a, a lunch interval, for example. You knew that um, if those, uh, if Cook and Strauss didn't see off the new build, Trot would come in and, and do the job. And, you know, th- they were a very, very good side. And they, it was helped because they had... Graham Swan at his absolute best and all the rest of it. So it's quite easy to captain, actually. You know, it's quite easy. Mm. Uh, Josh didn't have that at the T20 World Cup. He had to adapt. He had to do things differently all the time. He had to be so calm. And he did basic things like, you know, I don't know if you noticed the other day, but uh, Stark bowled nine overs. Well, mm. You know, that's ridiculous. You know, if you've got one of the best, and he is one of the best limited overs bowlers in history, uh, he bowls his 10. And, and he didn't because the captain screwed up his calculations. Just never does that. Mm-mm. And it's one of those things that we take for granted. It's really hard. Um, so I think he, he did all sorts of things really well, and he batted well. Right now, he looks like he's been asked to solve the issues in the Middle East, or he's got toothache or something. Uh, he, he looks dour. He looks down. Mm-hmm. He doesn't look as if he's lifting the side. He, he looks as if he's a source of anxiety. Uh, and he's not batting very well. Mm-hmm. Uh, I still kind of believe in him, to be honest. Yeah, you, the, the, you know, like, as you say, he has had these big moments as captain and we know he, he can yes. do it. And you yeah. really do want to back him to, like, you know, inspire this side, but something's just not clicked. Something's not clicked. Uh, yeah, I, I, I can't quite put my finger on it, but they haven't played together enough. There's mm-hmm. definitely a lack of confidence. 
And confidence is massive. But I always think that competence breeds confidence. And you get that by playing together a lot and knowing what you're going to do. So when you change the side a lot, you know, three changes in both the last two games, that, that's a big change in in in, uh, in in from one game to another. So th- there's quite a lot to the matter, but I, I, I'm not ready personally to say that he's not the best person for the job. But um, do you the, think the they- question's clearly legitimate at the moment. Do you think they shouldn't have made the changes for South Africa and should have left it similar to what it was in the game before against Afghanistan? Um, I, uh, none of these things are necessarily right or wrong, you know. I, I know I say this all the time, but decisions aren't necessarily right or wrong. I mean, some things are, but very often you make them right or wrong by the way you play. Now, Joe Root today ran himself out because he looked nervous, which is odd. You know, one of England's most experienced, yeah. best ever ODI players looked very, very anxious and played the shot of an anxious, inexperienced player. You, you, you want better from him. But had he not, he could have gone on and the balance of the side would look good. So it, it, it's a, I don't want to be simplistic and just say they got it wrong. You know, they had to make some changes. Yeah. Uh, and I understand why they've gone back. They went back today to the balance of the side, to the look of the side they were going to have at the start of the tournament. Mm-hmm. So I can see Rob Keyes just turned up and he said, wait there, we talked about this. Why are you so far from it? Yeah. Um, and, and you know, I can tell you some good things from the South Africa game. I do think uh, Reese Topley and Adam Rashid were very brave. Um, you know, Reese Topley's come back. He's got a badly broken finger. It had injections in it. Couldn't feel it. So all he could do is bowl length. I think at one stage he had bowled three and a half overs, one for 15 or something, and his last three overs were for 56. Mm. And, he, and he's only done it to, to try and help the team. Yeah. You know, he could have protected his own figures. We all know players, we've all played with people who would do that. So, you know, there's clearly something good going on there. Mm-hmm. You know, there is some unity and some pride and all the rest of it. You know, I think a lot of it is that a lot of them got old at the same time. I do. I think that they're, they're, they're not very fit. Well, um, speaking on that, we've got a oh. question from Background Noise who asks, can England's catastrophic showing really be explained by age and lack of format specific practice? Even given the surely you'd expect better, is the entire squad just freakishly out of form at the same time? OK, there's a lot in there. And, and it's as ever from whoever that is, it's a good question. But well, the firstly... The last bit uh, is everyone just sort of freakishly out of form at the same time. I don't think you could be so laissez faire about it. I don't think you could trust to chance to that extent. Just say, oh, one of those things. None of us are in form. If no, no one's in form, there's something the matter, isn't there? You know, there must be something the matter with the preparation, and nobody's in form. I, I, so that's the first thing. Secondly, no, it's not just age, and it's not just fitness, and it's not just anything. It, but those things all combine, and I do think the fact that. Um, you 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 have to also um, reflect on the huge value of players like Jason Roy. I'm not saying it was wrong to drop him. Lord Almighty, he earned his dropping. But he had been, in 2019, a magnificent player. And it pains me how underappreciated he is by England supporters. All the people who are like, oh, don't let the door hit you on the way out when he got dropped from the squad. England don't win the 19 World Cup without him. Yeah. Equally, Liam Plunkett, I think there's more sympathy for Liam Plunkett. Um He's a huge player on the England side of Joffre. You know, mm. Joffre's a, you know, I, I don't think I'd ever seen a bowler like Joffre in English cricket until he he turned up. So, you know, very, very special cricketer. So, you know, it makes you appreciate those guys. But the other guys, they've Johnny Bairstow can't field on the boundary anymore. He can't. Um, uh, ben Stokes has clearly got fitness and mobility issues. They've all got older and none of them have got better. None of them. So I think it's legitimate to point those things out. And, of course, they haven't adapted and played together in the same way. Uh, Milan and Bairstow up front isn't the same as Roy and Bairstow. Um, Root at three, Milan at two, you know. These things are very very different from the way they did it. And they maybe haven't had a chance to settle in and, you know, play better. But And also, and I should have said already, Angelo Matthews played really, really well. Mm -hmm. Uh, I thought there were lots of things, actually, that Sri Lanka did really well, but I thought Angela Matthews hadn't taken a wicket for what three or four years, and the ball that he got Milan with was a beautiful ball. You know, really smart. I don't know what it was, it was sort of cutter, and he got it to kick off the surface. Presumably, it hit the steam. Maybe it was a bit lucky, but it's a really good ball. Milan hasn't stretched for that. You know, he's just he's played it. His his 
bat is right compact in with him. And it's just bounced a bit, taking the edge. Terrific bowling. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, they lost a couple of early wickets and played really, really well. So, um, as ever, the opposition deserve a lot of praise. Uh, England were completely outplayed by South Africa. The worry today is that they came up against a side who had to qualify. You know, I think they, you know, they came into the tournament as the ninth-rated side, you know, in terms of qualification, and they thrashed them. So that's a bit of a worry. So, look, I don't want to say it's one thing. As I keep saying, it's not just Josh Butler's captaincy or the selection here or the fitness there. It's a combination of all these things. And basically that comes down to poor management in the longer term. Mm -hmm. um, Keith Hardy asks, are the late announcements of fixtures, massive geographical spread of games and torturous group stage part of a plan to kill interest in ODI cricket? I mean, I, I, this is a conspiracy theory, yeah? <laughs> it is a conspiracy theory. Are India trying to ruin ODI? I don't think so. Mm -hmm. But I wish I could say it with absolute certainty. I'm not 100% sure because some of it is bizarre. It feels like in England had done a lot of travelling in the first bit, didn't they? There was a lot of... Yeah, well, they do. They, well, you know, I've done it too. Um, yes, yeah. We're not walking, <laughs> you know? And, uh, well, no, I mean, I mean, actually, there's been quite a comfortable spread between games, five, six days, typically. Great. It's been lovely. I'm oh, sorry, I shouldn't say that. I mean, it's been terribly hard work. Uh, <laughs> and it's been uh, sad to see an English side uh, decline like this. But aspects of it have been really quite comfortable, yeah, in terms of the the, the gap between games. As I say, we're, you know, we're not hiking. Stay in lovely hotels. In the back of the uh, is a fantastic place to travel yeah. up to, yeah. to, to in many ways. You know, it, it, the, the, the food and the comfort of the hotels and the friendliness very often is spectacular. So no, the, none of those things are an excuse for England. Mm -hmm. In terms of the other stuff, look, the format, the format's horrendous. But we know why it's uh, horrendous, because they prioritise money against everything. Since 2007, uh, you might not remember, because you were probably you were so much younger than me, but there was a, a, a supposedly going to be a very... A uh, famous game in Barbados where they put on flights from India for the first time, direct flights. And it was meant to be India v Pakistan in Barbados. And India lost their first two games or whatever, went out of the tournament, and it turned out to be Bangladesh v Ireland. Uh, so it was a sold out game with nobody there. And ever since then, the ICC have made sure that India get the maximum amount of games possible because that's where the uh, TV revenue is. And uh, they, they have to make sure they play Pakistan because the revenue for that game goes out of the roof it goes through the roof now we all know this uh personally i think it's real short-term nonsense i think if uh there were a bit more jeopardy people would be a bit more interested for longer if the pakistan game was a bit less predictable and had more on it i think it would seem more special there's a global event every bloody year after all you know maybe miss out once or twice so personally i'd like four groups of um i'd like 16 teams with four groups of four Mm -hmm. quarterfinals there would be jeopardy it would be shorter and you get more teams involved so you Isn't know that's the way i'd do it but there's sort of a few more games and then we've basically got the top four basically nailed on isn't it yeah, yeah. The, the, you can you can pretty much guess the top four now so we're going to have a couple I'm of weeks. halfway through just generally I've, yeah 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 so we're going to have over two weeks of dead games largely mm. yeah I, look I, I i'm the wrong person to ask because <laughs> I, I love it no, but I love it. I love it that there's cricket on TV every day. Yay. I do. I, I, I love it. But I'm the wrong person to ask because I'm not the sort of casual uh, supporter who might be won over. I think peril is really important. Yeah. Uh, you know, I like promotion and relegation in everything, and I'd have it in test cricket. Even. Mm -hmm. um, what we have here is, again, short-sighted administration, desperately trying to make as much money as possible. And now they're chasing their tails because as the story I did a few days showed, uh, you know, star Disney uh, India have lost $444 million up to the 1st of July. So they've overpaid for cricket, and not all the cricket they're getting is has the jeopardy required. Mm -hmm. um, well, Will Cooling asks, do you think this side is trying to save Test cricket by tanking their white ball reputation to the extent that no franchises want them anymore? Hello, Will. Uh, so I like that. It's a better question than any answer you're going to get. Um, just, just on that, though, I think there is something to be said for the idea that um, in the olden days, the White Bull side was the release for English cricketers. That was the fun team. It was the cool team to be in. It's not anymore, is it? No. The test team is. And uh, they are. They do look 
much as they say they don't. But every time you see the England fellows on this tour, they 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 look as if they're doing overtime in a call centre for all the joy. Yeah, it's... you know it 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 doesn't look like they're enjoying it as they enjoy uh, as much as they enjoy the test side. Yeah, uh, is no. that because I, I don't know expectation in management? I don't know. They're with together for long. Mm -hmm. The time there's more of a, a team atmosphere because they you know they are together for a long amount of time training and playing I suppose so maybe more camaraderie yeah. amongst the regularish eleven maybe uh, but let's remember as well that they went two 0 down in the Ashes you know they they played quite poorly at times in the first two tests and had they been better prepared they might have won that too mm -hmm. I don't think the preparation for in English cricket is anywhere near good enough I'd say mm -hmm. I, I think they're complacent. And I think they're hubristic. And I think they turn up uh, having played as much franchise cricket as they possibly can. And they think it'll be all right. And and no one will dare say it. But none of the managers, or none of the coaches will say it because the players will get pissed off at them and get them sacked. I think that's the balance of power. Um, well, Rumel Rahman asks, is it reasonable to suggest that this side looks uninspired at best under the current leadership? High-profile players openly questioning the format in the middle of the tournament and everyone looking, frankly, miserable mm. since the start. Well, I've said some of that, haven't I? I agree, I agree with some of that. And um, You know, the, the, the question in the format halfway through, poor old Joe Root, he put his hand up to do media because he wanted to protect his captain. Yeah. And, uh, and he did do that. He said, I think Josh is great. I wouldn't judge the team's results by him. And, you know, it's not his fault and all the rest of it. And then there was a throwaway question, which is actually mine, uh, which is, um, have you changed your mind about the 100? And he said, no, but, you know, do do we play enough? Should we play 50 over cricket when the blast is on or something, which is ludicrous, of course. But um, you can see why these things happen. And, and, and something like that might happen now, because what will happen is there'll be an overcorrection. Won't there? There'll be a course correction now. And they'll start to take the domestic 50 over competition more seriously again. Mm -hmm. But again, if you want a solution there, windows don't work. Domestic competitions can't run in windows. I understand the attraction of them, but it can't work because there's so many competing uh, events that I think you have to schedule across the season. So, yeah, I don't think it works. Mm. Uh, Occidental Tourist says, how much 50 over domestic cricket is played by the other leading nations players? Isn't it a bit facile to blame England's woes on the lack of importance placed on the Royal London, or whatever it's called anymore, rather than poor performance and selection? So I think they were discussing well, this post-match, and uh, Nasser Hussein mentioned something about, you know, Rohit Sharma and Virat Kohli haven't been playing much domestic 50-over cricket, but they're... Well, of course they haven't been playing... Blah, 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 but wait, there. sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt, that was rude. <laughs> But they're, you know, having a. I mean, it is a home tournament, and it is, you know, they've got the home support. But his his point was, well, they've not been playing loads of it, but they're still having a blinder. Yeah, but it's not just about domestic though; mm -hmm. it's about international as well. And look how many um, international games uh, of fifty over cricket Vera has played in the last year. Because I reckon it's twenty odd. Mm. And then compare it to how many Joe Root and Stokes played, or you know, Stokes maybe about a poor example. But at the same time, domestic is relevant because if you the best young players aren't coming through that system, and Vera would have played lots in his early days, no doubt. Yeah. Then where are they learning the very specific skills? Because Gus Atkinson, for example, had played two list games before he played ODI cricket. He had bowled 10 overs once. So it's not just about domestic and it's not just about international. It's a combination of all these things. And I do think that's legitimate to look at. Yeah. So remember. Joe Root missed an ODI series against South Africa to go and play franchise T20 cricket. Okay? Yep. So things like that have happened. And players have been rested. The Bangladesh series. How many top players played in the Bangladesh series? How many first choice players? England arranged a warm-up series against Ireland and then rested all their players. Yeah. yeah. And just before that, they played a four-game T20 series against New Zealand. Who's yeah. making this stuff up? I mean, didn't they say, I don't know if it was Key, said ideally we would have come to India and played some 50 over games there? Well, yeah, you know, rested them anyway. They we'll didn't... do it then. Like, yeah. <laughs> Made the decision. Yeah, well, I mean, look, it, it, to be fair to him, it may have been arranged beforehand. Yeah. Uh, before he came in. Mm -hmm. But come on now, we can't learn all these things anew. Mm -hmm. You know that if you just rock up and don't prepare, hence the last ashes, for example, 
um, you, you're not going to do very well. But oh, uh, hey, uh, so an interesting thing. Two coaches who have been kind of shut out of the English system have uh, led sides to victory over England in the last couple of weeks. Interesting. Mm, very much. It, it's just quite interesting. I'll, I'll, here's my theory on that. Mo Bobat was sort of the, the gatekeeper on coaches. Mm -hmm. um, obviously didn't rate Jonathan Trott. Um, now, Mo Bobat had a performance at a time when you've got, what, Root, Bairstow, uh, Stokes, Butler, at their absolute peak. It's not a terribly difficult job. Has left. Just in time, I'd say. Mm -hmm. Just in time before, you know, uh, before it starts to fall apart. And um, maybe the, the the gates are open again to a, a bit more of a, an open-minded view about what makes up a coach. And it isn't just going for a beer with the guys and saying, should we go and play golf? Mm -hmm. uh, well, our last one for today is from Rolex Thalsis, who asks, how we reached 1999-2015 levels of despair? Yeah. Yes, I, I think so. I'm sorry if I, that's really miserable of me, but I think so because... There wasn't really a lot of expectation. I mean, in 1999, England were shambles. Mm -hmm. There's some good players, but they were shambles. And they did call out people right for. I mean, it was the bowling open by Ian Austin. I don't know. Um, I was I was only... Oh, that, that's... How, how old were you? Three. Goodness. Three. How lovely. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm very envious. So, no, I think, you know, English cricket wasn't in a great place in 1999. It was before central contracts. Um, and if in doubt, they just called up someone from Lancashire. In terms of 2015, expectations were very, very low. Um, and it turned out to be a wake-up call. This time, England had come as champions. We thought things had changed. The expectations were higher. And it's been humbling, hasn't it? Mm. I, I, and, and also, it feels like the end of a really nice story. Sorry. Yeah, I, I don't think I expected England to even make the set. I just expected them to do all right maybe make top five, maybe. Like a semi-final spot would be nice, but I didn't expect it because, you know, everyone else has been has been quite good. Um, and they've not even done that. We, are we dead bottom again now? No. Tenth? Uh, no, not, not at the moment. I think ninth. Fine. But, um, but you know, the, the, I don't think there's a lot of cause for <laughs> huge celebrations there. But look, I thought a uh, semi-final spot was par. Mm. And I think that's fair, you know. Um, so it's been bitterly disappointing. Everyone would admit that. Um, I don't doubt that everyone here is trying hard, and I don't doubt the goodwill of everyone involved either, but I do doubt the preparation, and I think there should be some serious conversations about prioritising. And I don't think anyone in administration is actually strong enough to say, you know, I think we need to put England before the franchise stuff sometimes. And I'll go back to one of the questions. I actually had a quite sharp exchange with Rob Key about it. You know, Ben Stokes wasn't fit at the end of the New Zealand tour. He just wasn't. And he should have been rested. I don't know whether there's a surgical solution to his knee problem. I don't know. So I'm not qualified to give you a worthwhile opinion. But he either needed resting or surgery. Mm -hmm. Instead, he went to the IPL. Now, he only played a couple of times, but he's always trying to play. Mm -hmm. And because he's always trying to play, he's not necessarily resting. So then he turns up at the Ashes. And I know he played all five games, but he wasn't fit. Mm -hmm. And here we are at the World Cup, but he's still struggling. You know, how many games he played? Two out of the five they've played. Mm. Well, someone's got to be strong enough to grasp this nettle. And I don't think any of them are. So you asked me earlier who who, who could have done it. I don't know. But I don't, I don't know that, uh, you know, player power is such that uh, if anyone tells them anything they don't like, that they, they just get them, that's the end of them. Which is why you end up with a situation where the job of coaches is pretty much to buy the next round and book the tea times. Sounds good to me. <laughs> But I'm not an international yeah, that's, player. I, I think editors should do that too. <laughs> Write that down. Uh, well, if you want to catch any more of George's coverage from the World Cup, uh, become a subscriber of the Cricketer Digital and we will see you on... It's just 9p a day. 9p a day. I don't, hey, I don't think you could do it by the day, I should say. But 9p a day. Yeah. I mean, that's a bargain, isn't it? Bargain. Well, am I seeing you again in a couple of days, Rio? Yeah, it'll be me or it'll be someone. It'll probably be around the same time as England are playing India on Sunday.